screen behind the pulpit and the organ pipes. And if they look to the back of the church, they see that there are some trumpet pipes up there too. But really the workings of the organ are way in the back there. If you look closely at the keyboard, you can see it's an Austin organ from 1966. So it looks like this. And then back in here, behind the screen, are the pipes. And that's where we're going to go. This little part here. Okay, we got Michael and Alex who have been doing the restoration in here, and they're going to tell us what they did. Okay, all of these uh, leather pouches here, pneumatics, were replaced. Uh, this regulator was rebuilt by another um, another uh, person. We didn't do that. But all these uh, white leather pouches are brand new or rebuilt actions. And they drive all the, uh, the valves that uh, supply wind to the pipes. Now what you say this is here? Okay, this here is a pressure regulator. Um, in order to keep the, the wind pressure steady uh, when, when there's demand, this um, this wall actually collapses when the when the room is pressurized with uh, four inches of wind, or it's actually about three and a half inches of wind. Um, what I mean by that is there's enough wind in this chamber when the organ's operating to displace two water levels three and a half inches. To keep it at three and a half inches, you need you need what we call a pressure regulator. Um, this, this actually collapses when the wind pressure comes up, which you'll see in a moment. And um, it's, there are springs behind it. And it's connected to a butterfly valve in this, this box right here. And when there's demand, when the organist is playing, this wall comes out kind of like maybe one of your worst nightmares. <laughs> it'll, it'll come out from its collapsed um, um, position to to uh, just just enough to um, compensate for the demand on the wind system um, when it when it comes out from its collapse position the butterfly valve cracks open a hair to allow that amount of wind back into the chamber keeping it at exactly three and a half inches of wind so um, now right above your head those are Right here, there. Yeah. these are what we call manual motors. These are for the keys. So there is one of these um, for every key mm -hmm. on on one one of the keyboards. Um, there's another set over there for the other keyboard. You have two keyboards on this instrument, and there are two sets of manual motors. One manual motor per key. Mm -hmm. And then all those, all these um, pieces of wood that are going across up there. What okay. are they for? Those are trackers, what we call trackers. They're connected to each one of the little leather pouches or manual motors. And they're also um, connected to each valve with a, with a, um, a jack, a, um, a shifting jack. When, um, when the manual motors, I don't know if you can see this, mm -hmm. okay. If the organist has no stops drawn, uh, and plays on the keys, the, the pouches will just collapse under the wind pressure, and I'll get to how that happens in a minute. Um, if a stop is drawn, there's a similar action on the other side that you really can't see. It's, it's going uh, perpendicular to, to this set. When the organist draws a stop, another pneumatic, 
which we'll call a stop action, pulls this armature over and changes the fulcrum on that shifting jack and then you can see that a valve is opening for this stop. So when the stop is off, no valves play. If she draws one stop and plays a key, then that note for that stop will play. And really the whole scale. Um, okay, hold on a second. Well, one of the things we heard, you were gonna replace leather. So what are they and how do they work? Okay. The reason the organ needs leather uh, for these pneumatics, I've sort of explained this backwards, but um, when this room is pressurized, if I were to have a balloon in my hand and I put a spring inside the balloon to keep it quasi-inflated, you know, without having to blow it up, um, and then I, in this pressurized room, cut a hole to the outside air, which is under less pressure, and I put the balloon onto that hole, what would happen to the balloon? It would collapse. If I took it away and brought it into the pressurized air, it, the spring would push it open again, and so on. Um, and what, what we have here, these are just really the balloons. Um, they have a spring that, that pulls them open. Um, and what, what happens is when the organist plays a key, it sends a, an electric charge to a magnet, which opens a valve to the outside air, causing the balloon to collapse. Mm -hmm. That's really all it is. And when she releases, the charge stops, the valve closes, and it re-pressurizes the pneumatic to, or equalizes it to the pressure in the, in the chamber. Um, and so if, um, if those have rotted or have pinholes in them, it doesn't work? It, they start to get weak. Yeah. Yeah, they, they weaken and, uh, you know, you can limp an organ along for you know, another five years or so, but uh, then they, they have to be rebuilt. Or replaced. So that's that's why the organ, in this case, for this type of action, which is called the electrinomatic action, that's why you need a leather pouch because mm -hmm. it's all it's all driven by these pneumatics. We found leather to be the best um, best material to use to for the pneumatics. We're gonna put this whole thing under pressure for the first time, right? Yeah, this is yeah. actually the first winding of this instrument, so there's no telling what what is going to happen. Uh, but that is the regulator in front of you, right, and that should move. Right, that will that will move. And the box right next to your knee is. This is the um, butterfly valve. This house is the butterfly valve. The now, does all the air come through there? Yeah, all the air for this instrument comes through here. In all this right. case, yeah, you have a very uh, well-designed instrument here, where everything is on this one box, fed by this one. So you're right over the blower? Or yeah, the blower is just downstairs. Okay. Under this wind line. All right, so when are we going to do this? Okay, here goes. So this is the first winding of First Church, New Milford. I'm connecting the linkage to that um, re regulator, which uh, transmits the, the, uh, the movement of the regulator into All the right. butterfly valve. Now I'm just reconnecting the linkage. Okay, well, we have one cipher so far, which we'll, we'll figure out where it is and fix it. Oh, that's a pipe that's kind of playing right. on There's its own? Right, a pipe that's playing on its own. Remember that your instrument just had major surgery. Yeah. I mean, we're talking maybe that's... almost like bypass surgery, so... So it's... now my ears are, are feeling a little okay, uh, popping, yeah. so we're getting under pressure. Right, huh? this, is, this is now pressurized, and we're almost there as soon as I connect the linkage. So when you consider how much surgery this instrument had, there's only one pipe playing. I think we did a pretty good job there you here. Go. All right, I'm Usually you get 25 or more. I'm just going to shut this off for one second. Okay. All right, so now, what did you say? The regulator's working okay? The regulator seems to be working fine. Um, it's also a test for that as well, and that collapsed uh, and went its travel. Um, Okay, now let's see if we can find that note that's playing and shut that up. To find it when you're down below. I think it's on this side. Oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. It was just a jack that got reversed, you know, in the rebuilding. So that's that's pretty good. All right. So it seems to be not ciphering, which is the first step or the first good news. Um, so now we're going to go see it play. All right.
cut. I have to let him out. Okay, so where we left off, the I guess the, we have Dell ciphers now, which is great. Now I'm just going to pop a few actions with a test wire. Uh, this whole system, the electrical system, um, runs on 10 volts or 10.5 volts, depending. I think we're on 10 here. Um, so it's a very low, 10 volt, uh, 10 volts DC, it's very low voltage. Now we're going to see some of these work for the first time. That one's healthy. So I am doing... These are stops, not notes, right? No, these are actually notes. Oh, no. These are notes. Um, this is what I'm doing with the test wire is what the organist would be doing with one key at a time. And, of course, she has... Uh, the power to play many keys at once, and of course you'll see that happen in a minute because I've sent Michael out to the console and he will play for you so you can see this all working the way it would be working on Sunday morning. Okay, I'll, I'll continue testing these later. Okay, Michael, um, play something for us. Now he's going to play.